Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On May 17, 2016, the Conservative Party on their opposition day tabled a motion about autism treatment ser services, and this is what it said. To the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, uh, accept that autism does not end at the age of five and that IBI intensive behavioral intervention should be available to children regardless of age. This was a good motion. We supported this motion. They were right here on this side, in these chairs, on May 17, 2016. It's, it wasn't that long ago, Mr. Speaker. And yet, now that they're in power, the Conservative plan punishes a child with autism for growing older and does not provide enough money for any child of any age to receive therapy. How did they get from this side of the bench to that side and lose their sight on what is important to all of us as legislators. And, and the people of this province have every reason to be disappointed because they feel betrayed. The people from Kitchener South Hespler, when that member was running in the election, the autism community rallied around her and helped her get elected by 770 votes. Mm -hmm. She made promises to that community and they feel betrayed. Uh, when the government announced its new autism plan with age and income criteria, there were lots of questions that went unanswered because the government itself did not have the answers. Kids' ability in my riding of Waterloo laid off its frontline staff because of the government's uncertainty of what the funding will look like. The minister just yesterday described that as premature. We would say it was premature for the, to roll out a plan that does not meet the children of autism, ch families and children in the province of Ontario. What is major job losses in any field combined with a reduction in service capacity will have economic ripple effects and will affect choice. This is what we hear from the government, choice. Speaker, giving families direct funding when there is no frontline staff for them to go to will not solve this issue. There is no choice if there are no options. And they talk about the wait list. If there are no therapists to help families to get direct service, then the wait list will continue to grow. Their plan has compounded the problem. This is where we are right now. This is why our critic and our party is standing before you using an oppo day motion to hopefully get through to this government. Redesigning the program and allocating $600 million to it might sound great in the headlines, but these families see through it. They have already challenged those numbers. We are, we're trying to get clarity on the numbers, Mr. Speaker. The plan is not equitable. It doesn't give every child what they need. That was the goal. That's what their motion was about almost two years ago. For a government whose main priority is supposedly fiscal responsibility, why are they still giving certain families more money than they need while denying children with higher needs less than they need? How is this a wise use of tax dollars? It is not. There is a gender-rural component with financial implications that stretch beyond uh, the impact on, on our economy but directly impacts our families. Rural and northern families are struggling to access services. What this plan that has been rolled out by the PC government, it has further destabilized an already fragile community of therapists and agencies. And they are tired, but they are not giving up, Mr. Speaker. The government had a plan. The, the uh, OAP, the Implementation Committee report, was done. They didn't have to create a crisis on the autism file. They have a committee report. It does not recommend age discrimination. It does not recommend income testing. It does not say zero funding for school transitions. They have a plan that they could have used, but they instead chose to create a crisis. Uh, Linda Kenny, the ED from Kids Ability, says that she's going to have to go back and get those therapists back, but she doesn't know what that six-month reprieve is. That's an important piece of this, of this puzzle, destabilizing an already marginalized group. What I would say to you is that every day I bring a young boy, Sebastian, to this debate. I never lose sight of that little boy because his mother is Janet McLaughlin, Dr. Janet McLaughlin, and she is a fierce advocate for all children on the autism spectrum. And she has met with the Liberal Caucus, and she has met with the PC Caucus, and she's going to meet with the NDP Caucus. And those voices of those parents need to be respected. And I hope that the government is listening. You have the chance to do the right thing today. Please do it.